On today's show, I'm joined by Carl Moore. He's a best-selling author and entrepreneur, and Carl also stars in The Evolution of Success. Thank you so much for coming on, Carl. I really appreciate it. Oh my goodness, absolutely. Thank you, Matthew. And let me say that it's a real pleasure to be here with you. And it's great that you're creating these podcasts right now, actually, at a time when they're adding so much value and comfort in all the places they're being needed. So yeah, massive kudos to you. So what has been going on with you? Whereabouts in the world are you? And what, what's, how, how have you been dealing with everything that's going on? <laughs> well, I, well, I can totally imagine. Let me just say that. Uh, well, I live in Manchester, and that's kind of the top right corner shoulder of the UK. Uh, it's not exactly the most fun part of the world right now. Um, if, if indeed there are actually any fun parts of the world right now. Uh, we're just finishing up our full second week of complete lockdown here in uh, Manchester. We've got plenty of new regulations and unknowns lingering around every corner. Um, it has affected me personally to quite a large degree and it continues to do so. But then again, it's doing the same for everyone across the globe. And it's only by us all deciding to, to do what we're doing and act together can we use that tool to try to turn the tide on coronavirus and, and move forward toward a, a healthier future. So it's definitely having an impact, but you know, as you said in your other interviews, we will get through it. The most interesting thing I've found about um, speaking to all you guys and, and working through these podcasts is, you know, you obviously teach this stuff and have businesses and, and have a voice in this industry where you're constantly showing people how they can have a better life and, and bring so much more into their lives, as well as Joe Vitale, Bob Doyle, Jack Canfield. But it's very interesting to see not only are you teaching it right now, but you're processing it at the same time. So we're actually getting to see what how you're dealing with it and the tools that you're using to actually go through this in real time. So um, could you just talk us through some of the things that you are doing right now? Because I know it has affected you. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right. That's a really good point. This is kind of like a trial by fire. And, uh, and that's a good thing. That's a nice thing in a way. This is, you know, the, I'm a man of the science. And so uh, I like to... Um, conduct experiments even on myself and see how I react. Uh, so you're absolutely right. And there is so much of that fear and worry and anxiety around coronavirus right now um, that it's having this interesting effect on the world and, and everyone in it. So um, for some, of course, it's bringing out those you know, intense neighborly feelings of compassion. So I'm involved in a group where we assist the elderly and vulnerable to ensure they get all the food and the medication and the virtual company that they need. And for others, they're, they're, they're snatched back to those base levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs where they're clearing superstores of fresh food and toilet paper uh, with more day one pandemic panic than I, I, I would have thought. Um, but what would I advise doing during these times? And I guess what is it that keeps me grounded? Um, well, it's probably stoic thinking. And... Stoicism is an ancient Hellenistic philosophy, which became the kind of base root of many areas of modern psychology, uh, including speaking therapy and Freudian therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy and so on. And at the very heart of this ancient philosophy is a really simple rule. And it's the idea that firstly, you can only ever control your own thoughts and actions. That is your own conscious thoughts and actions. And Secondly, it's that everything else is outside your control and therefore not something that you should logically stress about. So right now, there's this amazing likelihood that wherever you are in the world listening to this, you're probably on lockdown, you're isolated from others for several weeks, and you can still control your thoughts and actions. So you can decide to yourself that you'll take time out now to become a better person during this lockdown. And you could take that step by doing something such as investing in your education or, or you know, buying an online meditation course or working on yourself or, or whatever it is that you need to do to emerge a new person when that lockdown lifts. Now, everything else that isn't your thoughts and your actions, all of the rest of it, so what other people think of you or how fast coronavirus is spreading <laughs> or the safety of your investments or you know your job or your household plumbing <laughs> that's all out of your control so you can hope for the best and plan well but ultimately this is down to what the stoics call fate and in fact they suggest that we use the motto amor fati which is love fate and the core idea i guess to get in your head and leave in your head and the core idea that's in my head is the fact that i'm only responsible 
for my thoughts and my actions. Everything else, everything aside from my thoughts and actions is outside of my control. Therefore, uh, you should not and, and really cannot stress about it. It's just a guaranteed waste of your time. And it's a very spiritual way of looking at life, actually, controlling what we can and accepting everything else. So saying yes to the rest, saying yes to emotions, to invitations, to positivity, uh, to negativity, to whatever works. So the Stoic philosophy is a philosophy of saying it is what it is, and that generally it's all fine, and that's okay. And I think adapting that kind of approach is a great way to start taking mastery of our minds during this potentially turbulent time. And it's certainly how I, uh, how I, I cope through life in general. I, I would say that I am a stoic. It, it keeps you obviously living very much in the moment. Um, yes, it does. And it keeps my thoughts grounded. So during times like now, when things are pretty unsettling, and every time you turn on the television, there's a new world first. And the world is coming to an end if you listen to some of the misinformation spread on the likes of Facebook. And using those stoic principles of you can only control your own thoughts and actions and everything else is outside of your control brings back that element of, hey, I can do what I can and everything else is up to fate. And that's true for right now. We can only do what we can in this crisis. There are so many elements of it which are completely outside of our control, and that's fine because that's how life is. So I think that ancient Stoic philosophy helps me more now than any other time in getting through periods of uncertainty. There are only two things you can control, your thoughts and actions. Everything else is outside of your control, and that's fine. And it's always been the case. And that could be, you know, what other people are doing, how other people are reacting and, and buying and how people are clearing the supermarket shelves, how people are panicking. That's fine. And that's how they are processing things. But you don't need to be like that because there are only two things you can control truly ever. And those are your own conscious thoughts and your conscious actions. Control those and everything else will just fall into place. I, I think that's one of the key lessons that has helped to keep me going through and also keep me more logical and sane and stable during otherwise unsettling times. That's really well put. I think that's so clear. And whenever I even I was just thinking there, I was just thinking about something that is going was going on with me right now, just before we get on this this call, which wasn't a was wasn't a big thing. It was a technical issue. And I was just like, look. If we have to push this, if we have to do it, we can do that. You know what I mean? It's not the end of the world. You know, it's not the end of the world. Um, so some of the things as well that we talked about just before we went live was, um, you know, you were saying that you're getting uh, a lot of your friends are reaching out. You're in much more WhatsApp groups. You're having much more fun with people and connecting with people that you haven't seen in a while. I, I, like this is that's what I'm loving about this as well. You know, I'm having so much um, banter and good fun with my cousins and my family and my friends. I'm, I'm reconnecting with people that I haven't spoke to in in 15 years. Absolutely. And isn't that a fun thing to do as we all connect with each other and, and as a group sort of bring ourselves out of that uh, that sort of a low vibration and, and lift the world together. That's been a fantastic experience, I think, because it's it's that fear that tends to hold us back and keep us down in those lower vibrational states. And I think when you start to apply those kind of stoic style thoughts that I talked about, you can bring yourself back to a state of being aware and concerned about what is happening in the world right now, but without necessarily bringing in those vibrations of panic and fear. Uh, now, as a child, I was always afraid of the dark and it's a pretty, common thing. Uh, and one thing that I've realized as I've grown up, Matthew, is that that fear never really goes away. <laughs> I mean, I'm not scared of the dark now, but we're all afraid of the dark as in the unknown, you know? And nothing is more full of unknowns right now than coronavirus. You know, how long will it last? And when will the lockdown ease up in my country? Will my business survive? Will my pension fund survive? Uh, will there be that ominous, deadly second wave. You know, what about my vulnerable family members? And then you've got all that information as well. So 
you know, should you take ibuprofen or not? Or can you use a hairdryer on your nose to destroy the virus with heat? All of that stuff confuses things and makes us worried because it's all unknown. And ultimately, the one thing we are most afraid of is the unknown. And when we can put a number on it, when we can measure it, the fear tends to go away. And that's why the stoic thought process is, is pretty good, because you can say, hey, I can only control thoughts and actions. The rest is outside my control. And so it brings back control to you. And if you really start to look at the facts of coronavirus, and, and you, know, you figure out what's really going on, it becomes a lot less unknown. You know, so you've got the coronavirus, obviously, it's this highly infectious strain of influenza. It spreads rapidly. It causes mild to severe symptoms. It can affect the vulnerable more. And so as a result, I don't want to spread out overly positive Pollyanna rhetoric because it's not a nice disease, but it's not always fatal. So here in the UK, say, we have a 71-year-old Prince Charles who recovered following mild symptoms. So it's not always a death sentence, but to curb the spread uh, or the speed of its spread, really, global governments have had to bring in these new guidelines, so lockdowns and social distancing, which have generated more fear, more worrying uh, about this underlying cause. But once again, if you consider the facts and perhaps even practice a little gratitude in that, things might start to feel better. So when I sat back and really looked at what was going on, here's the kind of conclusion that ran through my mind, Matthew. So we live in a world that's ready for coronavirus. Okay, so like in 1981, it took the World Health Organization two years to identify HIV. And with coronavirus, say, it took a week. Uh, the WHO reported initially the mortality rate um, was something like 3 to 4%, but it turns out it's, it's more toward 1%. It's showing infection rates may be slowing in key countries like China. Um, and so... It's important, despite all the worry and the panic and the, oh my gosh, life is never going to be the same again. And, oh, this is a total paradigm shift, a game changer, all those things. Amongst all that, it's worth keeping in perspective with that stoic mindset um, that, it's, that there is still a positive there. You know, my granddad was conscribed before in World War II. Um, and here, the global community has been asked to stay at home and, and Netflix binge. And it may be unsettling. But it's just a change. And as the Stoics would say, you're responsible for your thoughts and your actions. And everything else, including your health and coronavirus, it's all outside of your control. And therefore, it's something that you shouldn't stress about. It's a fear that you don't need to create. And you can find uh, yourself taking every sensible precaution. You can find yourself um, being safe and finding comfort in the facts. And you can find yourself feeling safe knowing that you did the best that you can. And if you must watch the news, you know, try to indulge just a couple of times a day, preferably read the news rather than watch it. Um, it helps to regulate that kind of shock factor and keep you in a positive place. But find comfort in the facts and steer clear of the hype and the misinformation. Do your bit to help everyone else. And, and that's a great way to reduce unwanted fear, uh, to install those stoic mindsets, those stoic thinking points, and to get on top of the scary coronavirus emotions that are raising their head with most people during this period i think yeah i, th I think that i think that's really good also like you know i i the when anil was on we i done a call with anil the other day and he talked about the circle you know where you have like you've got the people that are fact about and then you've got a circle inside that that's like your close fat your work colleagues and you've got another circle that's your close family and then the, in the center of it is you you know and he said that there's various different people at various different stages dealing with the mortality of this whole um, situation. I don't know what it's like for you, but definitely the circle has has closed slightly. Um, and I, ha I, I physically know someone now who has, you know, contracted. And also I just there's someone related to someone in, in our work with us that that has now passed away from it. You know, so for for that person that then is directed to it and with all, with the knowledge and stuff that you sort of know, what what do you think is a good sort of coping mechanism for that person right now? Is there anything that you could sort of lend advice to? Well, I'm with you and I'm in exactly the same situation. Uh, so I just want to pass that along. So I completely and utterly agree. And I think the fact is that you can't Pollyanna rhetoric the situation. It's not a good situation. The disease 
is not going away anytime immediately, but it needs to be approached with the right mindset. And one of those mindsets is to just acknowledge the fact that there are going to be tragedies and problems and issues that arise from this, but it's about how we deal with it in this moment. And it's really interesting to see how it affects us collectively as a society. And I would say a great example of how we shifted probably hit me a couple of weeks ago. So, as you know, I live in the UK and smoking inside pubs and clubs was banned many years ago. And I don't know about you, Matthew, but if you ever watch any of those old dramas where someone's smoking indoors, it kind of hits you and go like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> that's odd. They're not allowed to do that anymore, you know? And yeah. as recent uh, sort of coronavirus social distancing measures have shown, um, it showed to me, I think, just how neuroplastic our brains really are, just how quickly we can change and adapt. So I watched a short film yesterday, and as a family hugged at the end, my brain flashed with bright lights, and I was like, hey, social distancing people, come on. And <laughs> so within a, a very short period of time, my brain had already rapidly adapted to that new norm. So I'm a kind of test case in neuroplasticity. And like you say, I'm, I know you've felt the same too. And that's all a good thing because it's just a brief reminder that humans are designed for adaptation, for change. And while we don't necessarily do it all the time, <laughs> uh, and it might seem a bit weird and a tad scary and nerve wracking, um, we can all enjoy the benefits of neuroplasticity. Our brains are flexible. They're able to handle these kind of societal shifts with ease. And it's, well, I think it's just something that's already inside of you. So. I think it's time to give yourself a small pat on the back for the millions of years of evolution that have prepared you for this moment. And you're doing the relatively easy version. You are adapting. You have neuroplasticity coming into play, ensuring you can survive during this period. So absolutely for sure, when it comes to changes like coronavirus and much, much bigger changes, they may seem scary, they may seem frightening, but you are built to handle this. You've basically got this. You've been designed for it. You've been built for it. Evolution has prepared you for this moment. Yeah, that, that, that's brilliant, Carl. Thank you so much for that. And the, the thing is, I, I actually heard today, you know, I got a call this morning from somebody quite close to me and, and a relative of theirs had passed away um, of COVID-19 and they, they weren't able to be with them. Their family wasn't able to be with them. But this was showing me like a whole new level of like gratitude because her sister was actually uh, is a nurse and works in a COVID-19 ward. So was able to go and spend time with that family member while they passed and, and before they passed. And they were so grateful for that, you know, through this time and the, the, the uncertainty around what they're going to do about a funeral, the uncertainty, what they're going to do about, you know, what happens next? How are we going to we weren't there to be with our um, our family. I was. I actually quite got quite emotional on the other side of the phone and was trying to really contain it. By I couldn't believe that she was grateful, so grateful for this thing that happened that in such an, um, a crazy time. And I was saying, and I, I didn't want to say it to her at the time, but I was thinking it myself. And she was a pure example of people finding something to be grateful for at all moments. I I was definitely taken aback and thought, oh my god, that is so brave of even to even say those and even feel like that absolutely yeah and and it's it's one of those times i think that it can feel like life is on pause and, and your own happiness is uh, a distant memory that will probably never come back and it's it's it, it's shocking and uh, you know it's a, it, it, people are, are being put in terrible situations and they're having to encounter such difficult uh moments it's 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 just it's hard to comprehend like that's what makes it so difficult uh and 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 you ask yourself the question when you're in situations like that and i've been in exactly the same you ask yourself you know will i ever find that happiness again you know uh, uh, what do i have to be grateful for right now um and you know i heard to the interview did with Joe Vitale and the personal story, for example, which is, you know, a great example of how to become more grateful. And I guess people will be asking, you know, can, I, can, can I still be happy right now? You know, when I've got people ill and sick around me, can I still continue to go through? Is it even acceptable to be happy, to smile? 
you know, the, the, the social rules have changed. Is that okay? Um, and I'd probably just, I'd probably leave a thought there that, that happiness only ever lasts for now. You know, it's not a, really a goal or a permanent state of being, but it's rather a series of flashes as we head throughout life, an improved mindset that kind of allows us to appreciate more in this moment. So being happy, being grateful is a decision. And in the same way that being afraid is a decision, a stoic decision. And so you can right now in this moment decide that you are going to be happy and you are going to be grateful for the small uh, dollops of good luck that come your way. And as you control your thoughts and actions, you can take those first steps to making that happiness and gratitude happen. So perhaps, maybe, just for now, you can allow yourself to make that decision to be, let's say, just 1% happier or 1% more grateful for all the chaos and craziness that's happening in your life right now. To be more happy, more grateful for yourself, for those around you during the pandemic, or even just for today in and of itself, as much as it is, or as little as it is. And you might just surprise yourself by finding how you can influence your own narrative, the story that you tell yourself about yourself. So yes, you can be happy now. Yes, you can be grateful now. And it doesn't really matter when now is. So if now is now, then it's a good time to be happy and grateful for how things are in this moment. I think I think that's great, Carl, and I really appreciate that. I I I love I love that. That's brilliant. The that that's great. I, that was a great conversation. There is one thing that I had spotted um, whenever I was sort of reconnecting with you. You you guys had actually made um, a pretty much a, an anxiety stress um, meditation, which very much related to what's going on right now. I was specifically for what was going on. Um, you know, you did offer as well that we could share that with our audience. Uh, it's a it's a free meditation. I'd be very thankful for that, and I'm sure they would be as well. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, you bet. So uh, we have produced a hypnotic meditation audio, which you can find online at inspire3.com/coronavirus. That's inspire3.com/coronavirus. Everyone knows how to spell that now, and you can go on there. It's a 30 minute listen long uh, hypnotic meditation uh, mp3 from Sharil Turner and it helps to alleviate some of the stresses worries panics around the pandemic and helps to boost your own healthy immunity habits uh, good eating habits reduce uh, stresses during isolation and all that good stuff so you can find it in inspire3.com slash coronavirus but you know I'd also say that this is a great time to up-level your life in other ways too. It's a really interesting social experiment in a way because never before have we had so many people locked behind their doors thinking, hey, what do I do with my time? You know, I can totally splurge out on Netflix or I can work on my personal growth. I can work on becoming a better version of myself when I emerge from this process. So maybe part of that initially is to work on your worry. So getting rid of that crippling anxiety that, the media can promote in us all. And then that's when the fun really begins. So you might say, okay, I'm going to use this lockdown time to replant the garden or decorate the utility room <laughs> or, you know, Netflix binge. But for some people, this time could be incredibly transformative because they've never had such a period of time on their own before with their own thoughts. So it'll encourage periods of introspection and self-reflection where you look in the mirror and you say, what is this all about? You know, what's the meaning of my life? <laughs> what's the point? What's the purpose? Or maybe you'll ask, how can I up-level my life when I leave this lockdown? So every day, we each tell ourselves stories about ourselves, and these form a narrative of the person that we say that we are. But by taking a little time out to begin that special personal growth journey, the journey to know oneself, to actually change the way we think, by changing our internal narrative, that description inside which tells us who we are from a million of our experiences, we can emerge from coronavirus better than ever before. And in fact, I'd probably say that uh, there is a case for people whilst at home attempting to be coronavirus positive in a good way and regard this downtime as a period that might just come with a whole bundle of unexpected benefits. So, you know, consider what's the point of my life? You know, what am I doing? Reevaluate 
what is. And I think that might just end up being one of the hidden benefits uh, during this otherwise very challenging time. Well, that, that, is, that is great, Carl, and I, I share your thoughts 100%, I do think. Um, and th- we'll, we will leave it at that then, and I want to say thank you so much for coming on. We will leave a link to your um, download in the copy of this down below this podcast. You'll be able to get a link straight to Carl's uh, meditation. And um, thank you so much for that again, Carl, and thank you for coming on. It was great. Oh, my goodness. My total pl- pleasure. I really appreciate you so much. Uh, thanks for the wonderful chat, Matthew. I love you. Thanks for creating the podcast to really support the community. Um, I truly appreciate it.